Also, this is a very good round for you. A very good round. Okay, boxea. Keep boxing now. Boxing three of the next four weeks here, followed by Wimbledon. Let's make them pay for them stealing it from you, huh? Let's make it pay. You gotta work, though. Okay, come on. I wonder how this fight will change the perception of Oscar's fight with Trinidad, if it does at all. Out here in the West and Southwest, Oscar is a clear favorite. Back East, it no doubt the support will be for Oscar's Trinidad. Oscar's got the bounce into his legs again. Obacar is wondering, he sits there and think about what he's gonna do because Oscar's moving, fanning shots away. That's the Oscar De La Hoya we know right there. That's the Oscar. You know, the car's got to just can't, can't make a got to be a moving target. Another left hand by Deloy and down goes Car again. Four, five, what a shot! The car does not eight. want any more of that. Come to me, come to me. Well, right, once come again, me. that'll change come the perception. Me. <laughs> again. And Steele says that'll do it. Obacar just couldn't get it together, and Richard Steele stops the fight, a TKO for De La Hoya. Well, De La Hoya has shown that he could close the deal in and out of the ring. The master of the late rounds once again strikes with an 11th round stoppage of Obacar. He really set it up, George, with that blistering last minute of the 10th round. He landed virtually every power shot down the stretch of the 10th round, and that softened Carr up for what came in the 11th. Most importantly, he started to get the bounce into his legs. He's not, he's just an ordinary fighter without the bounce. He's, be, he's better realize that and don't revert to the old man stuff. He doesn't want to be a George for <laughs> He wanted to be the golden slugger. boy. Yeah, flat-footed slugger who walks his man down. Yeah, you are. You don't want that. He doesn't need it. He's got the legs. Use them. Once those legs are pumping. Mm -hmm. So just like Trinidad did in 1984, Oscar De La Hoya hurts Carr too badly for Carr to be able to finish the fight. Trinidad's TKO of Carr came in the eighth round. De La Hoya does it in the 11th in a fight in which Carr had given Oscar a lot of trying moments. But when he gets his left hand into play, like that, he's a superior fighter. Most importantly, he fell right on his face. That's, that's not what you want to see. It's hard to recover. Oscar's got the power. Many looks at this classic left hand counter shot. You know, he stood up straight and used his height. So Obicard threw a left hook, yet Oscar was out of range because of his height advantage. And yet he used his reach advantage to get that little extra inch in there that he has in the advantage, and he clocked it. And, and knocked the man down and eventually out, even though he was leaning away as he threw the punch. Because of the reach advantage, he has it. And he, he, his power is all in his hands. It's not much in his arms. I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to say it's all in his left hand. He wouldn't knock a man down and out like that with his right hand. No. Michael Buffer is ready with the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, here at the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas, referee Richard Steele, following the knockdown, calls a halt to the bout at 55 seconds of round number 11. The winner, and still the undefeated WBC welterweight champion of the world from East LA. The Golden Boy, Oscar De La Hoya. punch stat numbers and you can see that De La Hoya landed 83 more punches than Carr. Carr threw 241 more punches than De La Hoya, thus the dramatic difference in connect percentage. 
Our scorecards show us, incidentally, that Oscar De La Hoya was ahead on the three scorecards, 96, 91, 95, 92, 97, 90 going into the last two rounds. So on one of the three scorecards, at least, his margin was bolstered by the two penalty points awarded by Richard Steele in the seventh round, but he was clearly safe and away on the other two scorecards. Power punch numbers show that Obakar did better in that regard, landing 34% of his power punches against De La Hoya, and Oscar may want to clean that stat up a little bit as he gets ready to go against the two-fisted power of Felix Trinidad. De La Hoya landing more than half his power shots here. Let's go to Larry Merchant on the ring. Thank you, Jim. All right, Oscar, uh, congratulations on another victory. A little tougher than you thought it would be? You know what, this guy, uh, no, he can take a punch. He was ready. Like I said, um, every opponent I have, they lift themselves to the, to the moon, to the sky. So he was ready. But uh, uh, it was a good fight. In a number of rounds, he was simply beating you to the punch, and uh -huh. you seemed a little bit off-put until you established yourself. What was going on? I was ready. I was. Uh, I didn't feel tired. I didn't get tired. I uh, felt very strong. But. Uh, yeah. Do you feel you made the transition to being the kind of aggressive fighter that you said you wanted to be in this fight? Oh yeah, I was. I uh, pressed the fight in the first round. Second round, a uh, little personal problem that I had that I will mention. But uh, after that, uh, what was it? What is a what is a problem you can't mention? I would rather not, because I have an opponent, September 18th, Felix Trinidad. I'm gonna get you. Come on, on, bring it on. We're gonna fight. Let's do it. Okay, I'll take your cue then. Why are you <laughs> calling out Felix Trinidad? He should be calling you out, presumably. Why do you want him so badly? Because I'm, we're going to fight September 18. He finally signed the contract. Let's do it. That's my next fight, September 18. We're going to do it. And I'm ready, and he's ready. It's going to be the fight of the century, I guarantee. Were you measuring yourself against Trinidad in terms of his fight with Carr when he stopped Carr in the eighth round tonight? Oh, no, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do, uh, after the second, third round, I couldn't do the things I wanted to do. A little personal problem that I kind of encountered. <laughs> you couldn't do the things you wanted to do. I mean, does it have something to do with your stomach? No, just something uh, something physical, yes, but uh, I'd rather want to not mention it because uh, it's kind of personal. <laughs> kind of personal. Okay, I won't go any... The low blows. That's <laughs> uh, uh, all right. You, uh, were the low blows bothering you, actually? Because no, 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 you no, didn't no, show no, any discomfort no, no. during the fight. Nothing bothered me, nothing. I was, I was uh, physically ready. Uh, what about the butt? I mean, it was an, a it was an accidental, accidental butt, accidental. but a point was taken away. Did it have any impact on you at all? No, no. Not the head butt, not the low blows, nothing. Uh, he's a great fighter, good fighter, a uh, good solid fighter. Should should we take anything out of the fact that in the last couple of rounds you started to move your legs more, started to get a little distance, and then the knockout came? Yeah, that's where that's where the personal problems occurred. Um, I had to use my legs more. You know, um, I, I kind of sense he got tired. So yeah, I did a, I did a kind of not showboat, but kind of jump up and down and uh, kind of counter him. You know, make him make mistakes. But uh, either way, if this personal problem wouldn't have occurred, he would have been out. <laughs> Sorry, All right, I'll, 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 I'll leave it to other reporters to unearth that, and I'm sure they will. All right, we'll get to Obakar in a moment and ask him his opinion about Oscar De La Hoya versus Felix Trinidad. Back to you, Jim, for a moment. All right, thanks very much, Larry. Let's start uh, by asking George Foreman his opinion about Oscar De La Hoya versus uh, Felix Trinidad. What would Oscar have to do differently against Trinidad? Well, Oscar's proven to me he's the toughest guy in welterweight and middleweights I've seen in a long time. He's the golden boy. He has everything going for himself, but he constantly seeks a knockout. And why these guys continuously pursue him with this power, I don't understand. Oscar has nothing to prove in my mind. It's, believe me, it's up to Trinidad now to climb this hill. So Oscar was looking too hard for a knockout, but Carr followed him around and made it possible. <laughs> right? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Let's go back to Larry with Obacar. All right. Thank you. Oba, that was a terrific fight you gave. Um, was the knockdown in the first round a two-point round, and the two points he took away from you later in the fight make you any more desperate as the fight went on that you knew you had to knock him out? Uh, first of all, I like to thank God, the Lord Jesus Christ, for giving me the strength to just, you know, make it to the 11th round. Uh, but you know, I could have been a little faster today and just you know worked off my uh, worked off my lateral movement and my stick and my my, you know, my jab a little bit more. But uh, you found him easy to hit in many rounds, didn't you? I found him easy to hit, you know. Uh, but you know, I, I think that you know 